The Earnestly Speaking Podcast is a show that is founded on free-flowing conversation and may at times venture into mature subjects. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to the Earnestly Speaking Podcast. I'm your host, Ernest E.J. Christian, and... We are going solo today on this Friday. Well, this is dropping on Friday, actually. We're recording this late Thursday night. Dropping Friday morning in your uh, in your podcast feeds. Of course, you can find this podcast on iTunes, on Stitcher Radio, on Google Play, on Spotify, yes. And now we are on iHeartRadio. So whatever podcast provider you may have, most likely you'll find this podcast. <laughs> most likely you'll find us. Um, so pleasure to be on today. Uh, like I said, going solo pod today. Um couple of things I'll touch on, of course, on the show. Let's we'll start here, of course, with my picks for both the AFC and NFC Championship games. I am very excited about this weekend, this Sunday night, this Sunday uh, in general, afternoon and nighttime. Um, Rams and, and Saints, of course, NFC title game at the Superdome. Um, and then the Patriots and the, uh, and the Chiefs. Which that, that, I, I think I'm probably more excited about that game. And I'll be honest, I'm, I'm, my, personally, I'm rooting for the Chiefs to win the whole thing. Cause I want, and for only one reason, for Andy Reid. I want, I want Andy Reid to get his first ring. I, I, I'm a big Andy Reid fan. He's a, one of the top two coaches in the league. I hate that people use the fact that he doesn't have a ring against him. And obviously, it, it is something a factor when you, when, he does, when you talk about coach all-time coaches. It, it is a factor. But Andy, make, make no mistake about it. Andy Reid is still a top-tier coach um, today. He definitely, even if he, even if he doesn't win a ring, he will be a Hall of Famer. He's one one of the coaches out there that's that's changed the game. He's he's, he's elevated quarterbacks, uh, uh, you know, average quarterbacks into playing better than they're probably they they, they, they even conceived of uh, at, at any point of their careers. So Andy Reid is the coach, you know, the guy. You know, he is a top tier coach. Like uh, yeah, we know Bill Bell, and and obviously we all agree Bill Bell's the greatest coach today, probably all time, and five rings, all that. No one's even. Uh, you know, no one's even arguing that, but Andy Reid deserves some love here. So, with that, here we go. We'll start the show with our picks. Hit the music. Let's get going. AFC Championship game, NFC Championship game going. Let's go to the first game. Uh, it's at three o'clock. So three. Well, I think it's three o'clock, right? Yeah, that picks the Rams heading to uh, the Superdome to face the Saints. This is gonna be a great game. I can't wait for this game. Uh, last week, uh, the Rams were very impressive. I, I'll be honest with you. Considering they're thirteen and three, considering they started the year eight eight zero, I would dare say, I would dare say last week's win against Dallas, and it may not be, ref- it may not actually may have reflected in the score itself, but that was probably the most impressive win of the year. Considering the balance they showed, considering how they gassed the Cowboys, a Cowboys defense that was that's the top tier defense in the league this year, top five in my opinion, one of the best run defense in the league, ran the ball. With both C.J. Anderson and Todd Gurley for over 200 yards, and I, I tell you what, I feel good about the Rams in this game. Um, the Saints came to this game, obviously the Saints coming through that, t- you know, tough coming behind win over the Eagles, the defending champions. Uh, and remember, they're down 14 nothing in that game. Um, but I gotta tell you, if you ask me now who you feel better about, I feel better about the Rams going forward, even even though they lost to the Saints earlier in the year in this spot at in this building. Now the line opened at three and a half points. Uh, um, right, after, you know, early in the week, and it stayed at three and a half points the entire week. Um, in fact, I think the, the very few places that may have this game at three points, but it's, it's pretty much a pick 'em. Like three point favorites, you know, Saints get that because of the, the home team. But I gotta tell you, if you ask me now in the vacuum who thinks win this game, I like the Rams. I'm, 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 I'm taking the Rams plus three and a half here. I think they'll win outright. I just think Jared Goff, you know, even though he's on the road, this is a good spot for him. He plays playing in the dome. He's played very well here. It is two, it is two starts here at the uh, Superdome. He's, he's, he's a uh, Throwing for six touchdowns, two interceptions, uh, with a quarterback rating of nearly one, nearly one ten, uh, a completion, a completion percentage of nearly seventy percent. He has played very well in this building, and if that run deep, if that running game plays the way it do, like did last week against Dallas, and remember the Saints lost their tackle um, for the year. If they, if, if the Saints, de- if the Rams' offense, run, run offense, especially the running game, starts to gash the Saints, it, it, this game, this game's over. I don't care if it's in Superdome. Yes, there is a uh, definitely a, uh, a home field advantage here for the for the um, the Saints, but I like the Rams here plus three and a half. Give me the Rams here uh, to win this outright. They will represent the NFC in the Super Bowl, in my opinion, um, in two weeks in Atlanta. All right, 
the game I'm much most looking forward to, of course, the New England Patriots, the dynasty, the greatest dynasty in NFL history, maybe in all sports, if you think about it. Remember, this is a team that won five Super Bowls in, in, in 18 years. Tom Brady, five Super Bowls. Uh, Tom Brady to go. I race, uh, you know, I, you, you, you already know how I feel about Tom Brady, but, you know, Bill Belichick, all that. You know, they, they this is a, this was a very unpatriot, patriot, unpatriot like year, really, for the, uh, for the Patriots, and yet they find themselves here in the spot playing for the right to go to the Super Bowl once again for the first straight year. Uh, remember, um, this is their eighth straight AFC title game, um, uh, eighth straight, eighth straight year. Um, and, and I mean, you, you've got to be impressed with this. This is impressive. Um, but remember, they're on the road this time, and they're playing a red hot Kansas City team with Pat Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes, the M- who I think who I think is the MVP of, this, of the season. Um, I think he will win MVP this this year. Um, and I don't know this game. I have a hard time picking. Like all week long, I will. I'll be honest. I've leaned Chiefs, but again, if the Patriots keep the ball out of Mahomes' hands and cut possessions down. There was no question the Patriots could win this game as well, too. They already won the first ma- matchup in, Fo- in Foxborough, albeit it was a shootout, and they were big in the first half, and the Kansas City Chiefs made it, made it a game in the second half. I don't know where to go. However, I'm going to take the cop out here. I said, uh, and I'm going to take Kyle Nash's um, advice that he had told me um, earlier in the week. He said, if the spread is over 55 points, take the under. I will take the under here. I think this will be a, actually a lower-scoring game in comparison to... Uh, the last matchup um, in Foxborough back in October. Um, give me the under here at 55 and a half. I think it's going to be a 24 20 game. This will be a competitive. I think it's going to be a. I actually think that there'll be less possessions in this game because of the Patriots forcing their will uh, in this spot. But if you ask me right now who I'm leaning to win this game, I'm leaning the Chiefs because they're more special than the Patriots. They have more weapons. They have no answer for Tyreek Hill. They have no answer, they have no answer for, uh, uh, for Travis Kelsey. The, the Pats. They have to play pretty much a near a near perfect game like they did last week against the Chargers. Now, obviously, if the Chiefs make mistakes, that you know you see that happening. Of course, that then you have another, another situation. But I'm leaning the Chiefs, but I am betting for the sake of our picks. Of course, take the under at 55 and a half, um, and that's just that. So again, the Rams plus three and a half, and then the under on Chiefs and Patriots. Uh, and that is your picks for Championship Sunday. I cannot wait for this Sunday. The wings are ready. The chips are ready. The hot dogs are everywhere. Whatever I'm going to be eating that day. I haven't decided what I'm cooking that day. But I am ready for Championship Sunday. I cannot wait. Let's talk about my dude, Tom Brady. Tom Brady will be playing in his eighth straight AFC title game this Sunday against the Kansas City Chiefs. He's a three-point dog, <laughs> as I said earlier on the, on the show. Um, Tom Brady is incredible. That simple. He's the greatest quarterback of all time. I've that is something I've been sitting on pretty much since his third ring, um, and that was in details, of course. Jason Whitlock um, of FS1 and the host co-host of Speak for Yourself actually early in the week made a comparison to Tom Brady and said that Tom Brady is actually the modern day Muhammad Ali. Here's his thoughts, real quick. We're gonna talk about Tom Brady, the greatest American athlete of his generation, bar none. Hmm? That includes Tiger Woods, LeBron James, Serena Williams, and Floyd Mayweather. Tom Brady is the Muhammad Ali of his era. Yesterday, with a lot of the sports world predicting the fall of the 41-year-old quarterback, Brady pulled off a vintage Brady performance against a talented Chargers defense. Brady completed 34-44 passes for 343 yards, leading the Patriots to an easy victory and their eighth straight AFC championship. That's just incredible. Football is such a complex, difficult game. There are so many variables, and the one-and-done nature of the NFL playoffs makes the streak even more improbable. Much is made of LeBron James' eight straight NBA Finals appearances. It's an impressive streak, but it's not that shocking given the NBA's best-of-seven playoff format. I actually agree with him there. Um, in the comparison to LeBron James, Tom Brady is more impactful than LeBron James in terms of I, well, I, let me let me rephrase that. Tom Brady and what he's done with the eight straight eight title games and the five Super Bowls is a lot more impressive than, than LeBron James and what he did in the Eastern Conference prior to going to LA this past summer. Okay. Now let me let me something something unpack here real quick. Tom Brady to me 
you know, if we're talking on the field only and what you do on the field or in the ring, in comparison to Muhammad Ali, I actually agree with him. I actually agree with what Jason, Jason Woodlock here. I don't agree with like a lot of things. If we're talking about comparing Tom Brady on the football field versus Muhammad Ali as a boxer, solely as a boxer, I am totally with uh, with uh, Jason Woodlock here. No doubt about that. However, if we're talking about the, the, the complete, you know, you know, the, the entire package of Tom Brady on and off the field and Muhammad Ali on and off, on and off the field. It's a horrible comparison. Let me tell you why. Because, and it, it, it should take a genius to know this. Muhammad Ali goes, his impact goes far beyond in the ring. In fact, you can argue that the impact he had all out the ring is actually equal to what he did uh, in the ring, if you will. Okay? And I think we look at that. Uh, Muhammad Ali is the most important athlete in its capacity in the history of American sports. That means more Michael Jordan. That means more Wayne Gretzky. That means more than uh, LeBron James. That means more than Tom Brady. You name it. The impact of Muhammad Ali goes far beyond the ring. Again, his off-the-field impact actually measures as much. Some people might say more. I'll say as much as his in-ring stuff. Tom Brady, off the field, he's just a regular guy, family man, doesn't really address political issues. Uh, um, some say he's, you know, I mean, he's supposed to be a Trump guy, whatever. That doesn't, doesn't even matter at this point. Um, but you know, he's never really addressed that before. He's never made, uh, should I say, uh, selective statements. He's never made, should I say, controversial statements publicly um, otherwise. Um, in that way, New, and guess what? He's Michael Jordan. And Michael Jordan is actually the, the the biggest comparison. Tom Brady compares more to Michael Jordan because Michael Jordan is this, actually the same guy in a way. Remember, remember Michael Jordan? Republicans buy sneakers too. Michael Jordan straight away never talked about politics in his playing days. Never. Tom Brady, same thing. So the right comparison. And by the way, Tom Brady is in the Jordan category. Let's 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 end that right now. Talk about all time athletes. Tom Brady is on that Mount Rushmore. I am Mount Rushmore, four guys. It's Muhammad Ali, of course. It's Michael Jordan. It's Wayne Gretzky. And it's Tom Brady. Not even, and it's not even a conversation anymore. Tom Brady is, based on Tom Brady's mentality and the way he approaches the game of football, he is in the uh, conversation with Michael Jordan in terms of impact and being a Mount Rushmore guy. Now, in terms of off, off the field, whatever, that's the story. I would dare say LeBron James. is. That's where LeBron James has... um. Uh, has Tom Brady be off the field. But again, p politics, you know, be damned, of course. Brady, Jordan, even Gretzky never put out the political uh, agendas or political uh, preference out there for the public. They play, they play the game, of, they play the game of, of football, basketball, hockey, and maybe did their job, call a day. That was it. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm, I'm just saying that the comparison that Woodlock made is correct if we're talking solely about their actual job off the field, out the ring, it's not even a comparison. Muhammad Ali has everyone crush. That includes Jordan. That includes Kobe, LeBron, uh, Brady, everybody, period. It didn't take long for the Eagles to make commitment to uh, Carson Wentz this week. Two days after the game, uh, after the Eagles officially eliminated from playoff contention, um, losing to New Orleans in a hard fought game. By the way, I'm not an Eagle fan. You guys know, love the New York Giants. But I have to tell you, the Philadelphia Eagles, at least the last two, two years, maybe even three years, because I'm a big Carson Wentz fan, very likable team. Very likable team. Especially last year with all the you know, social justice stuff that I, I supported, uh, uh, some of it anyway, um, and just the way they handle business as a team. Hard not to like them, despite your rooting interests, your rooting preference, we call it. Um, and Nick Foles, great, great, great guy. Nick Foles had a chance again to do what he did last year. Come in from Carson Wentz on short notice. Wentz can hurt again, second year in a row, uh, late in the season. The Eagles, only this time, compared to last year, where the Eagles were number one seed, and were, they weren't the favorites to get in the Super Bowl now, despite that. But this year, the Eagles were behind the, behind the eight ball. They were 6-7, and seven, uh, and with thin playoff chances, 
and all all Nick Foles did was run the table, get to the playoffs, and by the way, beating playoff teams for the record to get there. Um, um, Houston being one, and, and I think the other one was uh the Rams. Um, and then winning a playoff game in Chicago, I guess one of the hottest teams in the league at the time. Um, it's you know Nick it, obviously there's, there's a lot of a lot of talk about well if the Eagles run the table if the Eagles go win another Super Bowl is it possible that Nick Foles can be the starting quarterback moving forward? Is it possible that the Eagles will actually consider trading Carson Wentz? And I said this you know a few weeks back. I'm a Wentz guy, and, you, and Wentz should be the guy going forward. But it would it would be foolish not to at least explore what you could get back in a deal for Carson Wentz. If you were to actually explore the idea of trading Carson Wentz, a guy now we, we've now seen that he's having a hard time staying healthy. Now, when he's healthy, he's great. He's, he's clearly the better talent of the two quarterbacks. No one's ever, no one's even going to um, even deny that. But um, you know, explore the idea of what would it cost? Not cost. How much? You get back in a trade because Carson Wentz will probably fetch at least two first round picks. Carson Wentz, when healthy, is a top ten quarterback. No one's even a, that's not even a discussion. Carson Wentz is, is a borderline elite quarterback, and maybe I oversold a little bit too much to coming to the year saying top five quarterback. Okay, fine. Maybe went a little too far based on the injuries, based on everything else. But Carson Wentz is a top ten quarterback in the league. That's not that's not even a question. Um, and but the Eagles nipped his butt pretty quickly. The, the, the Patriots came out on Tuesday. Um, after the, the loss to, to the Saints, two weeks later, saying that Carson Wentz is the guy moving forward. Carson Wentz is the starting quarterback next year and beyond. Um, which now leads now, what is Nick Foles' future? Nick Foles will be a free agent this year. Um, what kind of money will you fetch on the market? Will the Eagles pay enough money to make maybe keep Foles um, as a backup in the event the Wentz thing happens a third time, the, the fact he gets hurt again? Because now we're seeing two years in a row where this has happened and Nick Foles has come through the clutch. Last year, winning the Super Bowl. This year, uh, winning the playoff game. You know, um, but again, to to everybody who thinks they made he they may have made the wrong decision, I disagree. They made he, they made the right decision. Carson Wentz, when healthy, is the better is the better quarterback, the better talent, the better upside. Nick Foles is a good quarterback. I actually would like to see Nick Foles play another team, maybe the Dolphins, maybe the the Bengals. I don't know teams that need quarterbacks. Uh, I like to see if Carson Wentz can be uh, can actually uh, take another team and rise their their fortunes moving forward um so again they made the eagles made the right choice here there's, there's no question about that all right let's talk about jalen hurts jalen hurts now former alabama uh quarterback who just two days ago i believe two days ago well it was yesterday whatever um transferred from alabama to become now oklahoma's uh, starting quarterback moving forward um jalen hurts as, as i've said before in the past many times over Jalen Hurts to me is, an, is a solid average quarterback. He was it was solid for, for, the, for the Tide. Certainly, you know what happened in that national title game last year against Georgia in the second half, being pulled from the game. Nick Saban putting two in the game. Um, he made the right move. Where I've always been impressed with Jalen Hurts is the fact that not that it's it, in adversity and the, and the way he handled himself after that to me always impressed me. I've heard people. I have friends of mine who've met Jalen Hurts in the last couple of years. Who would say he's an impressive young man? He's he's a great kid, very nice guy, um, and it reflects in the way he's ha- he handled the benching in the national title game last year, which by the way propelled Alabama to win the national title last year. So the, the, so Nick Saban made the right move in the moment, no doubt about that. Um, and again, I believe you know Jalen Hurts was a solid quarterback. He wasn't great, you know. Certainly in the Nick Saban era, I, I would probably. Put him maybe maybe third best quarterback he's had under his you know behind maybe maybe AJ McCarron is better maybe obviously two was better in my opinion more special but Jalen Hurts is a solid quarterback and now he's going to Oklahoma um and I love the way he handled like I said, again he handled himself um uh, and then you know he had his moment this year where in the SEC title game with Alabama down um I believe it was two, a score in that game against Georgia go figure Georgia he got his redemption against Georgia um in the SEC title game and propelled. Uh, Alabama to win the SEC en route to playing in this year's national, national uh, title game, playoff, all that. He had his moment. He has he had his, his, his redemption time. Things working, Mister. You know, I'm, I'm not to get all spiritual here because I am I'm I am kind of a spiritual guy myself. But you know, th- sometimes God works in mysterious ways, and and that it, it was funny how he was able to redeem himself against the same team in a in a pretty big spot, also too. Um, the SEC title game. So, Jalen Hurts. You know, wrote 
a letter in the Players Tribune, a phenomenal letter explaining his reasons for leaving Alabama, going to Oklahoma. It is a phenomenal letter. It's, it's a letter so great, I have to read it on air right now. Um, and to me, it, it exemplifies who Jalen Hurts really is, the, the man he is. And remember, this, this is a guy writing a letter, and he's only 20 years old. This is, this is, this is like a, a letter. I'm reading this letter, and I'm thinking, this guy, you sure he's not 70 or 6 years old? Because he, he sounds like a guy that's, that's far beyond his years of maturity. And this is impressive. This is impressive. Here's a letter he wrote in the uh, Players' Tribune on January 16th. Commitment, discipline, effort, toughness, pride. Those are the five commandments of Alabama football. Those are the five commandments that have instilled in me that, and that have defined me for the past three years. And as I write this letter, I find myself drawing to those commandments one more time. It's been almost four years now since the day I got the phone call that changed my life. A coach by the name of Nick Saban was on the line, wanting to ask about the chances of a Texas boy like me packing up for Tuscaloosa and coming to play football at the University of Alabama. I took my recruiting visit and never took another. It was just love at first sight between me and this program. And it's crazy to think about the journeys we've been on since then. As a competitor, I wanted badly to, lead, to be part of a dynasty that, that, Nick, that Coach Saban was building. I wanted to make my mark. I wanted to leave, I wanted to leave a legacy. What was happen what what happened was what happened in the twenty eighteen national title game bittersweet? Of course it was. It was a humbling experience. It was tough, man. But even but I am even tougher for it. I am built for this. I understand that God puts put those obstacles and and challenges in my life for a reason. He wanted me to feel the pain I felt for a reason. He wanted me to understand the importance of never losing faith and of always staying true to myself. He had not brought me this far, just to leave me there. This isn't something you're stuck in, I tell myself. This isn't something, this is something you're going through. And one thing I can promise you is that I'm better off for having gone through it. Everything I dealt with at Bama, I'm stronger for it. I'm wiser, I'm a better man. And for that, I have so many people to thank. People who have, people who have made a deep and lasting impact on my life just from their past crossing with mine. People who have helped me, trained me, or flat out raised me, or even just believed in me. Thank you, truly. I have, I have graduated from the University of Alabama with my bachelor's degree in public relations, and I couldn't be prouder. This accomplishment means so much to me. But the education I received from Alabama goes beyond a degree. Coach Saban taught me the values and principles of business, as well as what it takes to be a great leader. My teammates taught me the importance of togetherness, brotherhood, and love. And this past season, it taught me a lifetime's, worth, a lifetime's worth of lessons about how to deal with adversity. Now I'm, now I'm, an, alumnus at the university, I'm an alumnus of the University of Alabama. Now I'm Bama for life, and that right there will never change. But now it's also time for me to start a new chapter in my story. I've decided to take my talents to the University of Oklahoma, where I will continue my development as both a quarterback and as a student. I'm very fortunate to have this opportunity, and I'm, and I'm excited for the journey ahead. One of the things that people, um, let me see right here, get more there. So yeah, one of the things that people always want to talk to me about is last month's SC Talent Championship game. They come up to me and say that it inspired them, or that they were rooting like crazy for me, or how they had been hoping all season that I would get another chance. They tell me how it was like a movie, or that they've got to make a thirty for thirty, make you a thirty for thirty, 30, for, 30, 30 for thirty now. You know how all, you know things on those lines. But I just tell them back that thirty for thirty, you can bet on it. Only not anytime soon. Not yet, because this story of mine is just getting started. There are, there are movie moments still to come. Growing up, I never thought I'd get to where I am today as a 20-year-old. And I dang sure never never thought I would have the power to positively impact so many people, and especially kids across the nation like I do now. It's a huge honor, but also a huge responsibility. Not everyone in this life gets the chance to be a role model and that's why I'm on this mission, to be the best player, leader, and man I can be. I know everything will unfold according to God's timing. I am blessed to be where I'm, where my feet are. My trust is in his hands. So to my about-to-be family, Norman, I truly appreciate you for bringing me on board. Y'all don't know me yet, but just for now, to introduce myself, I'm a motivated coach's son from the east side of Houston, and I love to play ball. And to my Bama family, once again, thank you for everything. It's been a great three years. I will love you until the end of time. John. Thirteen seven roll tide. That is a phenomenal letter. Okay, um, again, this is a twenty year old 
Jalen uh, Hurts, 20-year-old, writing this letter. Unbelievable. Um, and look, I think you know Lincoln Riley committing to committing to Oklahoma for at least a couple of years. Uh, he could do wonders with Jalen Hurts. Again, he's a solid quarterback. I guess I see Jalen Hurts as a, as a Russell Wilson type in a lot of ways. He's, he's mobile. He's a big, big body kid, short, good leader. Um, will he be better than Colin Murray? I don't know. Will, will he be as good as Baker Mayfield? I don't know. Probably not. But I do think with him, you know, and I'm, I'm look. look I'm not an Alabama fan. I'm not you know, an Oklahoma fan, but I will be a huge fan this year of Oklahoma, and especially Jalen Hurts because of who he is and who this kid is. He's a great kid, and he once again has shown he shows he has shown the right way to handle adversity. You know, I look. I, I was critical of Clay Bryant some degree about how he handled his transfer from uh, from Clemson to where he is now, the Missouri. Um, Jalen Hurts. I'm not saying that you know. Clay Bryant should have stayed, but the way you handle things, you know, people people watch, people looking. Jalen Hurts had the opportunity not only to right the wrongs on the field from last year, this year against the same team, you know, uh, he, you know he he learned a lot from it, and he's he's going to another another big time program, who's ready in the, in the conversation, ready for national championship uh, glory, and there you go. Um, and I, I again, I'm I'm next year I will be a huge Oklahoma fan, specifically because of Jalen Hurts. So. Uh, salute to him, and he's handled everything the right way. All right, that'll do today's show, of course. You can get me on Twitter at EJ Chris number seven, uh, Ernest Speaking, Ernest Speaking Media, rather, at ErnestSpeaking.net. Of course, uh, like I said, I'm looking forward to this championship Sunday. Uh, football's done. I mean, we have three more games to go. We have these two games this weekend on Sunday, and then, of course, the Super Bowl in two and a half weeks. Uh, I cannot wait for uh, these games. I'm also sad because there's no more football for a while. This has been, I, I gotta say, this the, 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 in closing real quick, this has been one of the better seasons we've had in a long time. No anthem stuff, no kneeling stuff, nothing about CTEs. I mean, and, and again, those things are important. No one's, no one's knocking that. But I think for the first time in a couple of years, we actually had a focus on football and We've had a good football, too, to talk about. We have young talent being realized. The, the rise of Patrick Mahomes, like we said. Uh, Jared Goff, you know, his third year, having a great year. Uh, of course, the old guard still doing his thing. Tom Brady, of course, you know, back in the eighth style game for the first for the eighth straight year. Drew Brees uh, back in the spot again. Uh, a lot of good things this year about the NFL. I mean, there's a lot more good this year than bad in the NFL. So I just wanted to soak that in. I wanted to soak that in because, obviously, you know, we're gonna have, we'll have the time to address the – anthem and in time to address the you know cte stuff but right now it's good to have a focus just on football so again i'm on twitter at ej christian 7 of course this podcast on itunes stitcher radio spotify uh google play and now iheart radio talk to you guys later um and enjoy your weekend god bless love you guys take care and see ya Thank you.